Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. You're watching Indigo Tech Tutorials. If you're new here, please press that like button and subscribe to the channel. So in this video, I'm gonna be conquering one of the biggest problems that I've seen facing new developers or really just people all over and it's procrastination. That's one of the biggest things that's blocking all of us from becoming successful. And what is procrastinating? Well, it's when you just talk about all the ideas that you wanna do or all the things that you wanna do, but you never take action. So that's why in this video, I'm gonna be building an app that takes your procrastination and turns it into something good by creating a place to store those ideas, giving you daily reminders to keep you, you know, staying working on the idea. And then also there's just infinite possibilities of more features we could add, like integrating with Fiverr to maybe help you get some assistance with building these projects, maybe integrating with different platforms to do things. So there's a lot we can do with this idea and I hope you all are really excited. So let's get right into it. All right, let's see if our domain is available. This is just such a good name. Let me see. Oh wait, I spelled it. I spelled it a little bit wrong. Procrastigrate.com. It's available. So, sorry everybody who's watching this who thinks it's a great name. Because I'm about to purchase it right now. I just purchased this domain for three years. And then I realized there was a typo in the name. That's so funny. But this is good to have anyways because this is probably a really common typo. Great. Procrastigrate. Huh. I think I like procrasti dash great. So we're going to get this one too. Woohoo, we got the domain. Now it's time to build the website. So to start building this app, I'm going to open up the terminal. And I'll just zoom in here. Oh, I don't need to clear it. <laughs> and I'm going to create the new app using the Rails new command. Pro, and I have to remember it's Procrast. Okay, Procrast D great. And I'm going to specify the database with dash D. I'm going to set it to PostgreSQL because this is the SQL database that I usually use. Then I'll use dash C and I'll say Tailwind to set the CSS framework for this app. And then I can just run that command and it'll generate the app for us. Right, I'm gonna try to minimize this too. All right, so now we created the app. Let's cd into this. <laughs> and now that we're inside, I'm gonna type in bin slash dev, start the server, which will allow us to open up the browser and go to localhost colon 3000, which is the server that the Rails app will be running on by default. Then once we get there, uh, we see this red error page because we haven't created a database yet. That's the first thing you need to do when you're creating a Rails app with Postgres. Uh, you just need to manually create the database, but there's a nice button there that makes it easy. And then after that, uh, we see that we have the Rails logo, and that means that everything's set up with Rails, and we're ready to start developing. So from here, I'm probably going to just add a home page. So to do that, I'll go into the console and I'll generate a new controller. I'll call it pages and then I'll give it a home action. And then I can restart the server, uh, but let's open up the code in Visual Studio. Now that I got the code open, we can go and navigate to the config folder and the routes.rb. And inside here, I'm going to need to change the root. So you'll see up at the top, we have a get for pages slash home, which was generated by that scaffold. But we don't need this because I don't want to have a, a pages slash home route. So let's just delete that. And then down at the bottom, uh, let's uncomment this root. And we'll just change that from post index over to our controller, which is the pages and the home action. And now that we save this, 
uh, we have a new root for our application. When we go back to the browser, we reload. Oh, we'll see how we're on the page home. It's perfect. Now I want to start styling this a bit to make it a little prettier. So I'm going to go back into the code, go to the app views. I'm going to stop first in the application layout. It's so the layouts folder in the application.html.erb. I'm going to quickly just delete this div. Or it's not a div, it's a main HTML container, which for some reason they add with the tailwind thing, I guess just to, because they're trying to, you know, make it more like a pretty site. And I, I like that, yeah, for uh, for doing the tailwind thing, whatever. But I always delete this. So delete the main just so that's a regular page body yield. Uh, no special main. And now we just have everything. It's uglier because it's all at the top, but we could add our own custom styling. So let's go back into the code. I'll open the views folder, the pages home. And then uh, there's already this code right here that was just defaulted from the scaffold. But we can change this up a little bit. I'm going to add my the name of my app. Procrastigate. And just do a description. So turn. Turn. Procrastinating into a productive habit. That's the whole idea of this app. And then also to center it, I'll just add some styling to this top div. So do max width with full MX Auto. And then some margin top just to push it down. Now if we reload, uh, oh, it's still on the left, but I wanted to center it. So we could either do text center or we could just do flex call item center. Like this, that's another way to center the divs. And then if we wanted to just, let's say, make this a little bit bigger, we could do that as well. So now we have this nice home page, and we can clearly tell what the site's about. Well, I'll definitely make this more pretty when I'm pushing to production and we're trying to get users. I'll do a really, really pretty homepage. But for right now, this is pretty cool. I might even do a nice Indigo background because you're watching Indigo Tech tutorials. <laughs> but as you can see, it kind of just only takes up that div because we did the max width margin thing. So let's instead, let's do, let's change margin to padding top because margin usually has some issues. And let's do another div around this. So we're gonna have to indent that div and just wrap it with another div. And I'll say that that's gonna be BG Indigo. Now you see it takes up uh, the whole width, but it doesn't do the height. Because by default, it'll just uh, only cover the content inside. But we can change that by saying min height screen. And then now by, by default, the minimum height it'll take up is the whole screen. So it's kind of just like the whole page, that's what we're saying. And then if we want to push this text down, uh, we could do more padding, but honestly, I might just go on the top level and do a flex uh, item center. So when you do item center with only flex, it's actually center horizontally. But then when you do it, when you do a flex call, it switches the way that it does it. But you see this one's flex, so it's just a row, but then we're saying item center to push it down like this. And then we can also do some padding bottom, which will kind of push it up a little bit. So now it's in the centered, but not like fully centered, which is kind of like a good way to make it look good. Wait, right, awesome. So we see this home page. I could even, <laughs> I don't want to get too carried away with the styling, but I'll just make this text a little bit lighter to match the background. Procrastinate, turning procrastinating into productive habit. <clears throat> Cause that's what it's all about. That's what my, my goal for this app is. Actually, I kind of want to add like an image or maybe a SVG. I feel like that'd be fun. I don't usually do that in these videos. But I want to see if there's a good image for procrastinating. To-do list, mainly procrastinate. See, that's literally how it feels sometimes. Let's download the image. Whoops. Now it's hard to see the tab bar. 
Uh, okay. And I want to drag this into my app. So what we're going to do to add the image in, we can put it in the app assets folder. And there's already an images folder set up in Rails. So I'm going to go over to my downloads. I'm going to take this and just drop it in. Now we see we have this image in our app. And if I want to display it here, I can just go and do an image tag and then just put the name of the file, which this one's actually a really long file. So let's rename this real quick. Procrastinate.jpg. And you just put the name of the file and it'll already know where to look for it. Now we see we have a nice image showing up. Although <laughs> I need to think of some way to creatively add this. So maybe not in this, this one has like that that fixed width, but I might want to have it take up the whole page. Let's give it a set height. Let's do object cover, but then you can also do object bottom to make it look at the bottom because you can see at the top, there's like a lot of space. Oh, that didn't really do what I wanted because, oh, because the top level is flex. So actually let's change it to flex call and let's change it to justify center. Okay, so this is already a little bit better. Uh, maybe change the image to height 80. Yeah, this is kind of good. Procrastinate, turn procrastinating into a productive. And then, well, that doesn't really make sense because you can't even see. <laughs> you can't see the to-do list part. Let's try to raise it. Okay, perfect. Something like that. And yeah, this is just like the main page. <laughs> it's not very pretty. There's definitely a lot of improvements to do, but this is kind of funny. Okay, so from here, uh, let's go ahead and add in the user accounts. So I'll go back in the console. I'll do a bundle add device. And also I wanna add tailwind underscore device, which is the gem I created in a previous video to make the device sign in pages really pretty. So we're gonna run that. It's gonna add these two gems. The next thing you have to do is install the device gem by doing Rails G device colon install, which this is just a generator to add a few things like it adds the initializer and also this locals thing. And I think it does a few other things too. Uh, from here, it has some next steps. It tells us to set the root. Uh, we've already done this. It also says to add flash messages, which we haven't added flash yet. So we can add that real quick. I'll just copy that code. We'll go over to the views, layouts, application. Let's quickly render a partial layouts alerts. And then we'll have to create that file in the layouts folder called underscore alerts.html to And we'll drop this code in. This is just to show either like the success or the error message after a user tries to submit a form or something. Okay. And then, oh, the last thing it said is if you want to copy the device views to customize, you do this, but that's where my gem comes in. So instead of doing their commands, I do rails, well, rails G tailwind device colon views, and then it generates the pretty views with uh, tailwind CSS. And then from there, oh, the last thing we need to do is add the generate the user model itself. And we do that with a device command. So you say rails G device, and then you put the name of the thing that you want to have be able to sign in. So for us, it's going to be just a user. Run that generator, and then we can migrate the database uh, to get this migration saved for users. After this, we are actually ready to go. So we can just restart the server, go back in the browser. We don't see anything new, but if we change the URL to slash user slash sign in, we actually do get the sign in page. But what I want to do is I want to add a login link right to this page. So it's about this procrastinate. This thing seems kind of stupid. Maybe I'll, I actually do, will add it into this, the div with the width. Okay. Let's turn down the pixels too. Oh, maybe it needs to have width full. Right now, I was just trying to center it. So 
do this. Honestly, I don't even know this image is really ugly. I don't know if I want this. I don't know if we want object to cover either. All right, let's just delete the image. That's, that's the worst image I've ever seen. All right, and now I'm gonna add the sign-in link right underneath uh, the description. So I'll add a link to sign in. This is gonna go to the new user session path. And if we wanna do a little bit of styling, we could do that too. I'm just adding some slight styling to the sign in link. Oh, also, I don't know where I should put my face cam. I definitely don't wanna block the code. I'll just try to move it whenever I notice. All right, so let's go back to the browser, reload, and just like that, uh, we have the home page and we also have the sign-in link. So from here, I'm just gonna click sign in. It's gonna bring us to the sign-in page. And there is a little padding issue, which uh, it's because I designed the gem with that main container thing that screwed it up. <clears throat> I'm just gonna quickly fix that. Quickly add padding top. Okay, a little bit better. Although I'll update the gem so that it centers the login automatically. Because that's the whole point of the gem. It's to be pretty. So I'll do that right after this. Now I'm gonna sign up for my new procrastinator guy. Sign up and beautiful. Now I've signed up, I'm welcomed to the site but i still see the same thing so let's fix that let's change it so that when you're signed in you actually see a different home page so let's go into terminal and i'm gonna go ahead and generate the goals all right or no it's not goals it's like ideas because procrastinators always have tons of ideas and they're just like ooh, ooh, let's do this let's do that but you know they never do it so that's what we were really gonna do. We're gonna generate a scaffold for the ideas. And then we're gonna add body. We're gonna do this rich text. And also let's do either like a title or just a name of the idea, All right? We're scaffolding ideas. There's gonna be name, there's gonna be body. It's also gonna belong to user, but I'm not gonna do that in the scaffold because Rail scaffolds are kind of dumb. If I do user, it actually turns into a field. So we're going to run this command first to scaffold the ideas model. Then I'm going to do a separate command. Then I'm going to type Rails G migration, add users to ideas. This is going to be users belongs to. And then I'm going to go ahead and migrate the database. And now that that's set up, oh, we're good to go. We can start the server again. Reload, we still don't see anything different. So to change that main root of the application when a user signed in, it's actually pretty easy with the device gem. So we can just open up the code again. And we can go into the config routes.rb. And we're just gonna add a line right on top of the root. Uh, I'm gonna do authenticated, which is the method from the device gem that allows us to do this. So we can say authenticated, then we pass a key for the model that we're checking for. For us, it's the user. And then inside of here, you can add any routes or any routes that'll get applied when a user signed in. So for us, I wanna change the route to the ideas index. And then we also have to change the name uh, at, using as because it's gonna conflict with the original like root path. So we need to change this to a new separate root path, which will be authenticated whoops, user root. Now, if we go ahead and reload, we'll see that we end up on the ideas index page. Perfect. And then we can go up here, create a new idea. Although you'll see right away, the styling's a bit off on this because, well, because I deleted that main. I probably didn't have to delete the main div, but uh, let's quickly fix that by opening up the code. Let's go into the app 
views folder, the ideas folder, and the index page. And right here we have width full. Instead of that, or we're still gonna have that, but I'm gonna add a max width, um, MX auto, and then padding top, which will right away, it basically does what the container styling does. And then if we create a new idea, uh, we'll see action text, rich text does not exist. Oh, I forgot to add action text because we're using that for the body. So to add that, we just have to go to the console, run rails action text colon install. Uh, that'll install action text. And then we also have to migrate the database. Action text uses a database migration for itself, or a database table for itself. Okay, now we could go create a new idea and we see it looks just like this. So if we wanna create our new idea, like, I wanna become a millionaire. And body would just be like, that would be sweet. Create the idea. Oh, we get this error. The user does not exist. Uh, because with that scaffold, it created all those controllers and stuff, but then we added the user after. But this would have happened anyways because scaffolds are dumb. But the way that we fix this is we have to go into the code and go over to the controllers, ideas controller, and inside here, down at the create action, this is where we're trying to create a new idea, but it's just creating it without a user. So we have to update this to set the user. So we could just do idea.user equals current user. And that would actually be good enough. Or we could replace the scope of the idea.new with the current user.ideas.new, which I like this better. But we need to go and add the association onto the user model. Because that scaffold, uh, if we go in the models, we see we have two different models. Uh, one of them is the idea model. Uh, this has rich text. Oh, it actually doesn't even have the association uh, because we did a migration. So we have to add belongs to user. And then also in the user model, we need to add has many ideas. Because a user has many ideas, an idea belongs to a user. And now we have the association between them, which is backed by a database column. Now if we reload, uh, we can go ahead and make that idea again be sweet boom idea was created we have the name of it the body we can go back to ideas and we just view all of our ideas and from here I want to improve the website a bunch and add some new features like for one I want to do a daily emailer reminder for the user about their idea now once they have tons of ideas we might just do we might just do like a generalized email like, hey, you have this many ideas, but like here's the here's your most recent one. Or we might even do the one that you're most interested in. I like how many times did you go and look at the idea or something like that. Go ahead and set up that mailer. So I'll go into the console and type in Rails G mailer. And then we're gonna need to name the mailer. Which is gonna be I'm just gonna call it like idea reminder. Or maybe <laughs> The reminder, right? The reminder email. Oh, and then we, hold up. I'm gonna quickly do a Rails D to, to delete it because I wanted to add an action. So let's do a Rails Gmail or reminder and we'll pass in an option. Uh, just like send email. <laughs> or the, okay, you have to be careful with send because send is actually a method. So don't ever do an action called send because it won't work or it'll like break something. So instead you have to make your method not conflict. So Rails Gmailer, reminder, deliver email, something like that. And then you'll see it creates the mailer for us. And it also creates the deliver email file. Perfect. And now we can go back into the code and let's go and edit that mailer. So inside the mailer, reminder mailer, it just has some default stuff, right? So instead we're gonna want to get the idea so what does it say oh yeah how you do it is you say params and everything it kind of looks like a controller because you're using params and then you pass the things in so we'd have idea and then we want to mail to the idea.user.email. 
just like that. And then the way that we would set this up, well, we could go and test this out right now. If we go in the console, we do rails C in the terminal, we get into the rails console, and we could do something like a reminder mailer, and you do with, and you pass in that parameter that shows up as the param. So idea, we're just gonna set this to idea.last. And then you, you just put the name of the method. So ours was called deliver email. And then you put when you want it to deliver. So I think you say deliver now or deliver later. Let's do deliver now. And you'll see it actually sent the email right here. This is the email being sent. If you want to preview it, which I want to preview it, uh, we need to get a gem for that. Okay, I found the gem. It was called letter opener. Uh, this is actually a pretty chill one. So I just want to add it. You want to make sure you only add it to development. Oh, that's pretty important. So we can go back in the app. Let's go to the gem file, which is just on the main uh, folder of the app. And then you can just go and put it wherever. Whoops. Although no, don't put it wherever because we want to make sure it's only development. So if we scroll down, find the group development and we'll drop the letter opener in. I'll go ahead back into console, run a bundle. Uh, that added the gem. And there's a few other configurations you have to do. So in the config environments development.rb, uh, we have to change this. So delivery method and perform deliveries. So let's go ahead back in the code. Let's go to config environments development.rb. And let's see, is there any stuff for action mailer? Okay, it's just these two things. So let's just add it right under here. So the action mailer delivery method is letter opener and action mailer perform deliveries is set to true. So if we go back in the console, I'm gonna go into the rail C and let's go ahead and deliver that email again. Press enter and then boom, you'll see, this is what the email actually looks like when it's delivered. So right now this is not what we would expect for our reminder, but this is just what it looks like. So if we wanna go change that content, if you remember inside the reminder mailer, we set the idea to add idea. So then this also has a template in the views for the mailer. So if we go and look in the views folder, now we have this reminder mailer folder right here. And if we click on it, inside of it, we have two different files for deliver email. So one of them is HTML and the other one is text. So if you don't know about emails, uh, there's always like the option to view it either as HTML or to view it as text. Obviously the HTML would be pretty and the text would just be text. There's no styling. So let's go over to the HTML file and let's go add our content. So what I'm gonna say at the top is maybe like, hello, their name. We don't have their name, so we're just gonna have to use idea.user.email. Or we could just say, let's let's worry about that later. So like, hello, <laughs> reminding you about your ideas. Okay, this is kind of stupid. Let's go back into that method and let's set the user to a variable. Oh wait, so back in the mailer, reminder mailer, we have the idea, but let's set at user equals idea.user, just because it'll be easier to access stuff. Now we can say something like user dot ideas.count. Oh, make sure you're doing this in Ruby too. We could say like, you have this many ideas to build. Right, although this might, this might overwhelm a procrastinator. That's why you have to really think about it. But for right now, this is just MVP. So we're gonna say like, you have this many ideas. And then here's your latest one. And then we want to actually put the idea body and it's going to be rich text. So that's actually already HTML. So I'm pretty sure we don't need to parse it or anything. But now when we go over to the text version, uh, I'll basically just copy this, go over to text and then start deleting the HTML parts. So I'll copy that content, go over to the text and then just delete all the HTML tags. 
All right. It's like you have this many ideas. Here's your latest one. And it's just text. But now, because rich text is going to show up as HTML, that's not going to be right. So we want to only get the text content. So I'm going to quickly see how to do that in the Rails console. So if we go in here, you can do idea.last.body. And you see it's this action text thing. So I just want to get the text, the content. <laughs> oh, okay, so we can say body, and then we can say content, no. Okay, body to plain text. Looks like that's how you do it. So you say body, body to plain text. Wow, that's pretty easy. Thanks, Rails. <laughs> There's probably an uh, easier way to do it. But I just like to joke. Okay, so now if we go, we say body, body <laughs> to plain text. Yeah, this, this looks... Now I can test that out to see if it works. Going back into the terminal. Go into the Rails console and just running that same command to send the email. So if we press with the up button on the keys, we can actually go back to that mailer. I'll just press enter and boom, this is what it would look like. You have one idea to build. Here's your latest one. Oh, one thing is it only gets the body, which for me was just like, that'll be sweet. So let's add the title. Here's your latest one. Or how about let's say like your latest one is, and then we put the title dot title and let's also go back to here let's fix that the latest one is and we'll put idea dot title and I'll also probably move this out into its own like maybe h2 now if we go back into terminal well, let's go ahead and reload to make sure that the code's updated and then we'll run that again oh and it says undefined title oh because we called it name So I'm gonna set this to the name. And I'm gonna go ahead back in the terminal, reload, send it again, and boom. Just like that, we got the email. So you have this many ideas to build. This is your latest one, and then it tells you the content. This is pretty cool. Right now we have a mailer set up, but we don't have it set up on a schedule. So we can get into that in the next section. So what I'm gonna use to send those daily reminder emails is I'm going to use the sidekick cron gem. Uh, this is what I've used in the past and it just makes it pretty easy to schedule a job. First thing we're going to want to do is actually add sidekick to our app because if we're going to use sidekick cron, we need to add sidekick. Okay. So it didn't tell us inside of the docs uh, to specify the queue adapter, but yeah, there's a few things we need to do. So let's go back into the app. And now we're going to navigate over to the config folder and then the application to RB. Now inside of here, we need to add this line of code that sets the active job queue adapter to sidekick. So that's good. We're all good to use sidekick on our app, but to run sidekick, you actually need to run another server like this, the bundle exec sidekick. And it just like starts the sidekick server, right? But to get that to run, how we usually, so we usually do bin slash dev, right, to start the server. And to get the sidekick job to, to automatically run, so we don't have to do bin dev and then another terminal to do sidekick. That's pretty easy because bin dev, if we look at what bin dev does, there's a bin folder in our app and there's a dev file. Just as easy as that. And it's just a simple shell script where it does like some configuration, whatever. And then it starts forming which is just over here in the proc file dev. And then for production, you'd have a regular proc file, which we don't have set up yet. Let's go in here. So proc file dev, you'll see we have a web, we have a CSS, and then for the sidekick, it's really just called a worker. Oh, whoops. And then you put the command bundle exec sidekick. And now when we go back and we do bin dev, it should simultaneously Start the Rails server, CSS, and Sidekick. So you see, looks like right here, the Sidekick server started. And then if we want to go and view 
the sidekick dashboard. I forget how we view it. Oh, so I guess they have their docs in another place. So they do kind of tell you. But you could either have done like G sidekick job. That looks so gross because active job has an adapter just like you saw. But this could be useful if you're outside of a Rails app that doesn't have access to active job. All right, exit out. Anyways, I think we're good to go. I forget where we go to view the sidekick. It's like slash sidekick or something. I don't even remember. Anyways, let's go. Oh, I forgot to, my dude, so I'll start a new guy. New guy, sign in. Oh, and right away, we see uh, we can actually view other people's ideas, which is really, really bad uh, for authorization, right? We don't want to be able to edit someone else's idea. So that's something we need to fix right away in our app. So we can open up the code, and then let's go to the app folder, the controllers, and the ideas controller. And we're just going to work on fixing that authorization problems. So the first the first one is the index. You see that we're getting the ideas from idea to all. Instead, we can change this to current user dot ideas. Uh, so now we, we just show all the ideas. And if we wanted to, we could even just not even have a variable and just access it off current user. But I'll leave this like this. And another thing we want to do is down here on the set idea, it's saying add idea equals idea.find, which means a user would be able to uh, go to anybody else's idea, even if they don't see it here. So like, let's see this is ideas two. I'll copy it, I'll go back, refresh, even though we updated this, so I don't see the guy's idea, but I can still change the URL, go to his idea, edit it, and that's bad. That's hacking mode. So to fix that, we're gonna change the set idea right in here. Instead of idea.find, we're gonna do current user.ideas.find. So it would only ever find the idea based off the current user. So if you didn't own it, well, we don't have the idea for you. And now if we go back and try to go to that URL, we actually get an error. Couldn't find idea with this. Now, oh, in a real web app, you probably wanna make these error pages pretty. And you can actually capture the error and make it pretty. I think a simple way we can do this is with a rescue. So if we go back in here, just do begin. And then we rescue this. And then we just render our, I guess our partial. And we could have a partial called like pretty error. Now this would look inside of the ideas folder because we're in the ideas controller. So when we render a partial, it would look inside of the views ideas folder. If we go and create a pretty error partial. There, like something unexpected happened. Now if we reload, uh, you'll see we just render this page and we really could make this more pretty by doing like with full I mean high screen just the same old centering stuff do you guys might think this is repetitive and it is repetitive to write tail and CSS uh, but I still do it I might I might switch though honestly I've been using this for a few years now and I'm still doing it Wait, something looks wrong. Oh, it looks like when we render the partial, we're not using a layout. Uh, it's not, it, it doesn't know how to render a layout if we just render a partial, so it doesn't know about tailwind. Can we specify a layout? That probably wouldn't work, right? No, <laughs> you can't do that. How would we do it then? Render, maybe render template. And then what template means is an actual page. So instead of having a partial, we have to rename the file to not have the underscore in the front. And now it's an actual template. Let's see if that does what we want. Reload, missing template, pretty error. Huh. 
Oh, so I... I mean, if you look at where it's looking, it says it's looking for it, and it's only looking in the app slash views. So I'm wondering if you render template, you actually have to use the, the absolute path. So we have to maybe say like ideas slash pretty error. It doesn't do any helper for us. Yeah, I guess that's it. So to do a pretty error, you actually need to render a template just like this. And then it'll have the CSS and you just make a file that matches. I don't know if you see, it's just like a nice prettier message instead of that red screen. Something unexpected happened. We could even do like a funny, some sort of picture. <clears throat> to be too annoying though how about like sorry this one I am sorry that's what we'll show our users I feel like they'll appreciate it so we just drop that image in to the assets images folder so let's drag it over here right here and then I'm just gonna rename the file so it's easier to access and call it sorry.jpg and I'll just go ahead, right underneath that h1, I'll do an image tag, sorry.jpg. I'll reload, and we see our sorry message. And then if we wanted to do any styling here, we could go ahead and do that. Mm. <laughs> I think that, oh, view height. There we go something unexpected happen and we're very sorry so yeah that's kind of cool to, to cover how to do a pretty error page because that's important for user experience honestly oh and maybe something that people would like is a link to go back home so like to, or take me back to my ideas and this will go to the ideas path. And then we could add some styling. I'll give it an underline or something so you know it's a link. I can make it a button, but there's so much text. <laughs> I don't like buttons with a lot of text. Okay. So you see, taking back to my ideas, let's make a hover state. Uh, a green, like we're good to go. Taking back to my ideas. Click, go back to your ideas. So now if you try to hack someone, we just show you a nice message. We don't even get mad at you. And show like the red angry screen. We just give you a nice, I'm sorry, you can't hack that. Okay, so now let me go create my idea. What was my idea that I want to do? Well, it could be anything. How about like, I want to drink some water. Thirsty. And then uh, I want to add a cool image. Oh, that would be a fun thing to do next is an integration with like an API, like this Unsplash API or something where we could pull images so you don't have to go to the website. See, I'm thirsty. Create this. And boom, we have my idea. And now, oh, the thing I wanted to do with Sidekick is set up uh, this cron. So we already have Sidekick working. We just need to add uh, the Sidekick cron. I don't think we added Psychic Kron. So let's go ahead and add that to the gem file. Let's go over the gem file. And just right under Sidekick, I'll add Sidekick Kron. I'll go ahead and bundle. Install that. And now we're ready to set up that Kron configuration. So to set that, we can go, oh, whoops. Open up the code. And we're gonna go ahead and create a new file in the config folder. We're gonna call it sidekick.yml. Inside of here, we're gonna add my first job. You can call this anything. I'm gonna call it 
daily reminder or maybe like daily idea reminder <laughs> and I've used this before too it's just so it's so annoying like they could have made this easier so what is it minute is first so th the first minute of the day in the first hour and then the wild card just means like every so every day of every month of every weekday that's pretty easy to understand okay now we have to set it up to to connect to that job go ahead in the terminal i'm going to generate that new job saying rails g job and i'm going to call it the daily reminder so now we have a daily reminder job uh, if we go back in the code we go to app and we go in the jobs folder now we see this new ruby file which is a daily reminder job and let's take a look at what this has so we're going to want this to run every day right now it has taking some arguments but we're not really going to need arguments so we can just leave this like just a regular old method and now to get this to go every day it's actually really easy if we go back in here uh, we just update this to the name of the class daily reminder job and this should already be really good it has a queue uh, so that's like if you want to specify queues in sidekick they have queues to organize priority of jobs so you have like high priority jobs low priority jobs and then sidekick is able to you know switch between them to make sure that they all get executed in the right queue for us i think i'll just do default queue I'm, I don't have any priority like that. I don't really care. At least not yet. So what this should do is every day it should do the daily reminder job. Right? And then inside of the job, what we're going to do, user.all.each. We're going to loop over all the users. And then we're just going to trigger that email. So remind your mailer dot with. Oh, that's one thing. Wait, didn't we do a reminder mailer? We might have to update that mailer. Yeah, for some reason we expected like a idea. But you know what? This is gonna be wrong. Uh, so actually, <laughs> the email instead would get a user from the params user. Because what that would look like is like reminder mailer dot with user and we pass in user and we say deliver email dot deliver later and then it would loop over so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get the user from params user and the idea will actually just be the user dot ideas dot last because that's kind of what we're saying anyways is uh, we just want to show their latest idea there and instead of to idea user dot email we can just go to user.email. We kind of clean that up and we have the daily reminder. So just like that, everything's everything's good to go. All right, I hope you all enjoyed that video and found it useful. Uh, please subscribe if you're new and you stayed around. I'm, that means so much to me, I really appreciate it. That's why I make videos, because I want to share my knowledge with others and help you, you know, complete your dreams and go to your destiny. Anyways, I, this was really cool. I know there's a lot more that I could have added like new features, integrations, all of those things. But I'll probably will do that and I'll, I'll do follow up videos because this is an app that I want to launch. That's why I bought the domain. But I encourage you to create your own one of these and do whatever type of crazy features use AI integrate with services. Yeah, but more than all that, I hope you guys enjoyed this and subscribe to the channel and comment down below if you have any new ideas for me to build because I totally will do it. I've been building a lot of my commenters ideas. But that being said, hope you all have a wonderful day and see you in the next video.